Hello, this is John Purcell from QuantumLifetime.com. In this tutorial, we're going to begin um, math uh, modeling mathematically a electromagnetic wave so that we can then gradually move from there to um, looking at the mathematics of quantum physics. Now, we've seen that a, um, a wave of light, an electromagnetic wave, or radio wave, or whatever, has an electric field that um, that varies sinusoidally. It's well, it's um, it fluctuates like a like a sine wave. So, um, if this is a, this is a graph that shows the electro the electric field of a ray of light or a radio wave or a microwave or whatever. So, this is an axis which we can call x. This is the direction it's moving in. And this is the electric field strength. So it's varying like this, like a sine wave. And uh, in fact, um, although we've seen that an electromagnetic wave is um, an electric wave and a magnetic wave that are kind of coupled with each other, it, it turns out that if we look at the effect of an electromagnetic wave on a charged particle like an electron, as long as that charged particle is not moving uh, close to the speed of light, as long as it's moving relatively slowly, only the electric wave will have a significant effect on it and we can neglect the magnetic wave. So that's why we often model light waves using a simple plane wave equation that describes the intensity of the electric field strength. And it's important to realize that this is just a graph of force. It's a, it's a graph of electric field strength. But it, it's not that the, the wave of light is actually going up and down in any sense. This is this is a force field that's going to push things this way when at this point and at this point it's pushing things that way and the whole field is actually going to move in this direction in this case. And that's going to try if there's a, a charged particle that's free to move, that charged particle is then going to end up moving up and down sinusoidally. So the charged particle will end up moving up and down. But the wave itself is not going up and down. It's just that the, the force field, the electric force field, is pushing in one direction and then the opposite direction, um, like this. Now we can model this using a the standard equation of a plane wave. If you search for plane wave equation on the internet, you'll find something like what I'm about to show you. So this is the electric field strength at any given point in time and space. It's equal to the peak electric field strength, which I'll call E naught, times sine kx, where k is a constant called the wave number, minus omega t. And omega is a constant called the angular frequency. Now, this isn't a very good model of an electromagnetic wave, because um, if you, let's say you try to work out the, the force on any given charged particle. If E is the electric field strength, electric field strength means the force per unit charge on, um, on any uh, charge that's placed in that electric field. That's the kind of definition of an electric field. But we can imagine a huge charge here, um, and uh, if we want to work out the force on it, we'd take this stuff, E0 times sine kx minus omega t, multiply it by the magnitude of the charge, and that will give us some huge force on that charge. And in reality, there's a limit as to how much energy there is in a light wave, and we can only fully capture that by using Maxwell's equations. But nevertheless, this will give us some useful, this gives us a few useful um, ideas that we can work with. So it's not a realistic depiction of an electromagnetic wave, but the plane wave equation does capture the way that the, at least that the electric field oscillates. In the next tutorial, we're going to take a bit of a closer look at this, the uh, wave number, also called the angular wave number. And then we're going to move on to looking at um, omega here. And we're, go and we're going to look at the, um, the energy that uh, is contained in a, in a light wave and the way it relates to the electric field strength. So I'm going to go on to use basic calculus as well as trigonometry and algebra in these tutorials, but I'm, I'm going to explain anything that gets very advanced, partly to get it clear in my own mind. Um, so, but I'm going to assume that you know basic calculus, so you don't mind kind of skimming through it. And it's not as hard as it kind of looks if you don't know it, 
but I'll have to refer you to other tutorials if you're not familiar with kind of basic algebra or basic calculus. So that's it for this time. Uh, in the next time, we'll look at the wave number. And um, until then, keep it real.